I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. But I'd be a month, about a month ahead of schedule. Um, I think Mike and I could probably, if we had to, positively probably create one as far as for FY19. As soon as next week, probably. We want to be careful about some of the uh, uh, expectations that we're going to make. So that being said, um, we will uh, be presenting a uh, an FY19 budget uh, with our recommendations. Uh, We'll have the, uh, the request that are made by the various department heads. I met with a couple of us. We'll be meeting with them in the immediate future. And uh, we will have a, uh, a plan as to uh, what we propose as far as funding uh, sources um, and any of the options that the town might have uh, going into FY19. And uh, you know, we're going to try to tear it down as much as we can, but I have to uh, uh, put too much of a burden on the taxpayers in the town, but um, you know, the fact is that uh, especially town government is, and the school department as well, has really been operating uh, with, a, with tight budgets uh, you know, for the last 15 years or so. That's what our game plan is, uh, that, uh, that that budget given to the advisory and the school committee and the board of selectmen uh, right after the holidays. Okay. <coughs> Just uh, one thing, one of the things that you've asked of Mr. Thorne is that when he was scheduling meetings with some of the department heads, that he could let advisory know and we would see if we could have somebody right. sitting with the meeting just so that we get the um, the detail of what the department is looking for uh, as we go through this process. Uh, we're trying to streamline it uh, for the departments as well as us, and but we're all trying to stay uh, informed. So, uh, if you can your meeting with them, please let us know. Thank you. I just wanted to um, reiterate to the board what we've been saying all along. Really, over the last couple of years, we've done everything we can to save a lot of the service. We will move into two and a half, and I think we'll be able to do that next year. Just based on the trends and based on the comments that are submitted to us. And not only do we have the prospect of an operational um, override from the budget, but we also have, uh, well, actually, not a couple, we have a bunch of things that we have that will also. Station, fire station, GPW facility, community center. There's a lot of things that could be on the table between now and May that's going to come upon us much quicker than we think. We weren't. Um, a lot of things are going to happen very quickly, and it's going to take some big thinking um, in order to successfully put that together in mind and you know, on a logical. Yet, but also the board is likely the school committee and advise you to uh, focus on the problem. Anything else on this discussion? Uh, uh, each of those who uh, open the end of the town meeting mark on January 22nd, 2018, for the close of the February. Bill, before you move on, though, I have a question. So we have all these folks from various departments in town. Uh, is there a, is 
further discussion to be had? Maybe somebody, I mean, I think we made up, I think it might be for the no, no, those folks are here too. Uh, but I just want to put a call out. <clears throat> We're all here in one room. There's going to be plenty of discussion going forward, obviously. <clears throat> we have a capital funding subcommittee committee uh, starting up right after the holidays. But we have all you folks in the room. Uh, and I, I just like to get us, if, if you don't have anything to say here tonight, that's fine. But I would like to get a sense of. Uh, the different departments, how you've been working with Ed and Mike, and, uh, and, and advisory to a lesser extent. Is that process working for you? Money might not be there at all times, but is that process working for, you, for the school department, for all the departments? I just wanted to make sure we took advantage of, you know, there's a, there's a lot of talent in this room. I just want to reach out to you folks. So I, I'll just say I'm um, happy to. Excuse me, can you come up to the microphone, please? <laughs> <laughs> That's no, it. Why? Please <laughs> identify yourself as well. The school. Uh, I'm Patrick Chalk, I'm the uh, chair of the school committee, and I report to Sabrina. Don't we all? Clearly. Just to answer your question, man, it's been, you know, we've really valued, I think, the relationship over many years. I mean, I think. You know, the fact that you know, Aaron and Ed talk pretty frequently, and Aaron and Mike talk pretty frequently, lines of communication with you guys have always been very open. I mean, we're really fortunate, I think, in Pembroke to have that kind of partnership and that kind of relationship. Um, and it, I think the benefit of that is even greater when we're going into times that may not be as fruitful as they've been. So, yeah, to answer your question, I think it's worked out really well. Great. That's how, that's, that was my sense, and I just wanted to reach out to you folks. Thank you. Anybody else? I can't. Okay. Um, we need a motion to uh, vote to open the annual town meeting warrant. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to open the annual town meeting warrant on January 22nd, 2018, and to close it on February 9th, 2018. Second. Is there any discussion? Mm -hmm. Aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I would move that we accept with regret the resignation of Tim Brennan from the advisory. Um, he's one of the um, really in tune uh, members of the advisory committee. Um, he watched the money like it was his, and uh, I think that's what we can ask the, of the uh, advisory committee. Second. Just to let you folks know, Tim will still be a valuable member of the community, serving in other uh, committees. There's only so much some of the young family can do at one time. <coughs> Having heard that, you'll realize we are now down three members. We are going to discuss tonight the fact that we will probably put an article in the warrant to be able to change the composition of the committee such that the quorum is based on the members that are appointed, not necessarily what is the maximum number because we've had to cancel meetings because we can't get more. Everybody is busy, I understand that. So not everybody can make it. But I think it's important enough that we are able to do town business that we have to make this composition of the committee work the best we can. And I would hope that this might get people to come out of the woodwork. I just saw somewhere where we have 12,006 some hundred and some registered voters. That's an awful lot to try to get two or three people to be part of the committee. So I would like to hope that we can find somebody. Um, we need to vote to adopt the second 2018 calendar. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that the board consider the adoption of the 
2018 proposed selectman's calendar as presented to us. Second. Any questions or comments? Aye. Serena, will you be posting that on the website? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'll accept the minutes of December 11, 2017. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that the board accept the minutes of the selectmen's meeting of December 11, 2017. Second. None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Aye. Aye. Next thing that's up is continued discussion of early non Medicare eligible retirees health insurance contribution rates. And I'm going to recuse myself from the floor. Um, <coughs> Matt's going to take over because I am a uh, retiree. Great. So we'll come back with you. All done? <laughs> Thank you, Bill. So this is a continued discussion. Um, the discussion we had here with the retirees a couple weeks ago. We both had a chance to look at a little more. Uh, We're back. We're back. Um, prior to last week, there was a lot of discussion about how many people want this, how many people want. So we even knew that the numbers were casting in 20 people. Um, 16 range, 16 in the range for the age of 64 to 57, and we we'll age out as they reach hit 65. Two of them, one of them is 65, one of them is 83. And neither one of them will out, ever be out of the community, so they will have to spend on the individual people. The other two, one of 46 and one of 51 are disability pensions. If allowed to stand the way it is now, they pay three thousand eight hundred and four dollars for their health insurance. If allowed to stand, they will eventually be paying six thousand three hundred and fifty-one dollars for the health insurance. Mr. Fulcher's number. But I, last week he did say something to me about the disability pensions and asked how it is fair. That someone at 65 go out and choose a 62% pension and have to pay taxes on it. When the two people who are on disability pensions don't have to pay taxes on it. Those individuals, because they are not safety employees, do pay taxes on their pension. The same pen the same taxes every other working employee pays on their pension. Now, the reason that these people are here is because this, most of them is because they saw the meeting last week and now they fully understand the impact of what this move does. They too were all represented in the meeting of 2012 when each one of us said we would give an extra bit of our insurance to keep these guys protected. And do you understand now that we should have been invited to some meetings we were never invited to? Judge asked last week, should we have been invited to negotiations? No. Now I'm told we should have been there. There's a health insurance meeting coming up Wednesday afternoon. Judge was not invited to be there. I was not invited to be there. They want to play with the with permission to speak on. Certainly. Okay. Please come up. My best recollection when we were discussing all this health insurance, and I may have been somewhat vocal in that, uh, was that we were going to take care of our retired people. They're on a fixed income. They have no way of making up the difference because they're no longer working. And it's kind of unfair at this point if we're going to change that. You know, you can take care of the people that can negotiate and can figure out how to make it work. That's great. But the people that have already retired based on those figures don't get a chance to refigure. They're, they're really healthy. So that was my recollection of 2012. I know there was a lot of give and take on both sides. The town had to do what it had to do to, to, to pay the bills and to, to keep insurance. But uh, 
we're talking uh, 20 people that have already we don't have a second opportunity to go back and refigure the time. That's, that's my piece. Anybody else? I have uh, one thing. Uh, one of the people that we've been discussing earlier, I'm not going to mention any names, his pension is $26,400. After taxes, that leaves him approximately, federal taxes, $20,000. If you assume on your own, $3,000 in real estate taxes, which is modest, right? That leaves him $17,000. So if this goes through and he has to pay $6,000, he's going to be living on $11,000 a year. Probably the reason why he says it was his own. I hope that if you do this, that the town is going to be saving hundreds of thousands of dollars because of high charge of this man. So I have to speak. Black and white, but 
life isn't always black and white. And if it was, take there'd be computers up here. You know, we have to make we have to make hard decisions that are um, that benefit all 20,000 residents. But we also don't want to make people lose their houses and go broke, especially a small group of, of 20 people. So I tried to come up with a compromise, a thought on, on, on how we can accomplish uh, not just our, not, it's not just our goal, it's a town's goal really to uh, to fund fund the health care. So the 25% is an important goal for us. So the compromise to people who are in a hardship would be just like a, a, an abatement on your real estate taxes. That's the process I, I was thinking. We, so we've looked into it and town council um, is, finds that that's in a violation of mass state law. We, you, you can't segregate uh, members of a group. We can segregate the pensioners from everyone else because you're a group, but I can't segregate uh, people within that group. So, um, you know, you, you might thought of it was embarrassing, but it's no more embarrassing than someone getting a tax abatement. That was my thought. We, we could disagree on that, but we can't use that anyhow. So I think this board really, and you know, I'll reach out to Ed before we take any action, but I, I think where we stand now is we have to make a, we have to make a choice. Either everybody's at 25%, come hell or high water, or we, we make an, an exception for the entire pensioner group. And that's where we are. And, and I'd like to reach out to Ed to, to expand on that and fill in any blanks. Okay, we're, the, the group of people we're talking about right now, or what are known as early retirees, these are people that have left the service of the town willingly or unwillingly, but are not 65 years of age and therefore qualify for Medicare. So they're on the town's health insurance plan until they reach 65, whether they're individual or family. Okay, so that's who we are identifying. Okay? Now, last week the conversation was regarding hardship cases. We've been told by town council that if the town wishes to examine hardship cases, we would need a, uh, a special act of the legislature. That we just can't do that on our own. We can't treat certain retirees different than other retirees because it's all in one unit. And thirdly, in your packet, you have the uh, memorandum from town council that said that under Mass General Law, Chapter 32B, you have to treat everybody in the same unit, excluding people in a unit. They're separate. But if you're in the same non-union unit, you have to treat all those retirees the same. So one of two things happens. Either you charge everybody 25% or you bring everybody down to 15%. And that's the choice. And if you bring every retiree down to 15%, it costs the town about $100,000 a year. So we would have to increase the town's budget by $100,000 a year to bring everybody down to 15. So it's either bring everybody down to 15 or bring everybody up to 25. And the plan that was before the board was that we would get all retirees up to 25% in three years. So those folks that retired early are still within the all retirees group. Correct. So even the folks that, that are re retired years and years from now, they're not, they're not in the group yet, so yeah. that's kind of I mean, cool. anybody over, 20, over 65 is paying 25%. To Medicare. Correct. Okay, the, and the early retiree is in the same track to get up to 25% as all the other retirees? They are now. 
That was what was proposed by the staff last summer when we proposed these current retirees that were paying 15 go to 19. Would that be altered with different than this, uh, this scenario? Only, like I said, you get one of two things. Either you're all at 25 or you're all at 15. But you're all going to be at the same rate. Mr. Chairman, um, after hearing the town administrator, that completely shoots down uh, an idea that I was going to throw out. If it's either 15 or 25, that clarifies the situation completely. So in order to get to 25, we've arrived at a schedule, which we've already voted to do. Um, any, any changes in that schedule, uh, I, I just don't believe it's going to pass muster from the legal definition that we received. Uh, I thought the hardship uh, suggestion was a good one. Uh, that's not possible. So we are at the choice. 15% or 25. Everybody. You can't have some at 15 and some at 25. Criminally. I don't recollect town council opining on whether or not you, some members, some retirees could be at 20, 15, whatever. But well, we went to them to ask them. That was our question. We started in one meeting, then they clarified the, between that meeting and the next meeting, they clarified the spousal continuation, and then by the next meeting, they clarified this. I'm sorry, I don't recollect. Yeah, we do. We talk about so so much that uh, I don't know if that specifically pertained to what we have here, but we did ask the, the question to the town council directly about this this issue, and they, they came back that no no unit can be split up percentage wise. So we have to come up with something else. Is what we really have to do, and that's what we need to discuss. If we even attempted a special act for the, the, the legislature, we wouldn't have it implemented for six months on a fast track. No, you know, absolutely. Anybody else want to comment on the matter ahead? Well, gentlemen, I think everyone has time to say their piece. You feel that we should table this around a week for more consideration given the new facts that come to light? I'd like to. Yeah. 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 Yeah
address your opinions, I'd like to discuss a little bit more. I think. We should have a roundtable discussion in, in public. Thanks, I see. So, if I can ask a uh, special act of the legislature, did they tell you what that special act was in the specific language? No, no, town housing did so plan that it would be, it would require a special act if you were going to break out considerations such as hardship or salary, health, whatever. And would there be a chance that that could make it even worse for us that the hardship would have to go to every, every group, not just the retirees? Well, I think we're basically looking at uh, early retirees. Just that segment of the population. That's all. I think opening up to active employees. That would be. That would be that's that's what I want to avoid. I don't want to try to help twenty people and then open it up to everyone in the town. Well, this probably wouldn't even affect twenty people. Another thought, the lesson the low would be to extend this. We have, right now we have a three-year, uh, <clears throat> three three-year schedule to go to twenty-five percent. If we made that a five-year schedule, would that be for the retirees? It would have to be all retirees, not just the early retirees in this case. So just. Right now, I'm just trying to give a couple of scenarios of things we could do. Well, now, if you start, if you start bringing in the people that are over 65, then you're talking, the number of day goes into triple figures. Please. And the ones over 65 are not on Medicaid? Yeah, we are. I, 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 I just have a quick question here regarding the numbers. As you say, there's about 20 people affected by this. But going forward for three years, how many of those are going to go to 65? So it may even be quite a few less than 20. The fact is they would be paying 25% of the next year. Yeah, there's a, there's a small number that are going to be in the early retiree category, or at least more than we're all going to be around. But, but I mean, in terms of the people we're talking about, who's currently retired. And again, I think we, we sent something here that we were suggesting to, to phase it in as well but to start for retirees, but of course this language means that it has to be everyone, you know, so better to follow them. I mean, you have 20 retirees that fall into this that, that are, have a hardship, but within the, the next three years, well, 10 of them, the rest of us, get to the Medicare hardship. Mm -hmm. You have a much smaller group. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the five year thing, maybe, you know, extending a couple more years obviously helps those that are, that are in the class. You know, it's, it's, um, it's when you retire, I'm retired, I, I retire to certain expectations, and I can understand if the expectations change, what happens. Um, I'm fortunate my wife was eligible in the town of Halifax, so we only pay 50%. But it's still it's still fifty percent. But the ones in this is subject what you're you're asking here. You know, I'm very grateful that we have that subsidy to get a you know catalog plan. Um, but I also want to say that, you know, if you can go to five years it might give that those people that extra year before they get the Medicare thing. Because most of them are probably between sixty to sixty five now. Do we have the exact numbers of, uh, you mentioned there was 16 of the 16 out of the 20 people were 57 to 64? Uh, if I may, what we're talking about there is a group of early retirees. The youngest is 57, and then we have two at 64. So next year, they're, they're going to 25%. Uh, the numbers All right, 16 people by uh, attrition are going to come off this list within eight years. So 
what would be, if you're considering state legislation, you'd be dealing with two groups. Those that will never be eligible for Medicare. Right, there's two of them. And presently, two people that are in disability. So, so if you were considering, those would be the two qualifications. It might qualify. You might go to the state. The rest of them are going to go to 25% by law when they're 65. Not you can do both. There's food for thought. So we're dealing with 16 that will go to 25% and four that are kind of far. Yeah, I, um, I think we got to extend this out. It, it won't be a week because obviously that falls on Christmas, but um, to extend it out um, to the next meeting. Um, because we're in a position just because we can do something doesn't mean we should do it. it there's a sense of fairness that I think has been talked about. And um, I think in, in two of the cases that are more isolated than the others, um, I think you need to, you know, pursue a uh, home rule petition, then that's what it's got to be. Because uh, I can't think of putting somebody in a position that they try to live on $11,000 a year. I mean, that's just, that's, that's not something that, it's not a vote I'd be proud to make. So, um, I will move that we table this for um, the next meeting. And in the meantime, we look at the, um, Legislative angle. All right. Second. We have a motion and a second. Looking forward to keep that vote. Just uh, talking about this in advisory and so forth about the insurance plan itself. We can get a cheaper plan or they can sign up for a cheaper plan that will make the premiums go down. Mm -hmm. So even though they're paying twenty five percent, the cost will be less. So we've been kicking around GIC now for about three years. We've been talking about the plan we have now and getting rid of that. But it, 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 it's something we have to, I think, look at pretty serious. You know, people get everybody else. I think we should probably do some type of analysis between these things. What we're using now, and we'll do it. And I see what works best for the town, what works best for the employees. And in the long run, if we're going with a bigger plan like PIC with 200, 300,000 employees, I'm sure we're going to get a better rate than standing by ourselves with, with three or four other towns. And if that's the case, and we can get a better price, so we get premiums go down, make them happy, we should make the town happy because we've been paying a whole lot less for it. Discussed with the government study committee. Um, 
Is that how you see that plan, seeing your own that committee? I see that it's, it could be part of uh, the committee's role, certainly, but conference, but it is not on the agenda, nor will it be for the next foreseeable future. The comprehensive study of the bylaws is a long, arduous, winding type of committee. I know I've been on the committee on the planning board, did just that for the, for the planning board, uh, zoning rules and regulations, and it is it is a very long and difficult road. You can take off, take some more hanging fruit, uh, but it really should be a committee on of its own, looking into nothing but bylaw reviews. And the government study committee at this time uh, just has a bigger fish to fry. Uh, if I may, I'd like to just uh, quickly review with the board this item number three taken from the financial management review that was done in December 2013. The uh, Department of Revenue's comments on bylaws. We recommend that the town perform a comprehensive review of its bylaws. This review should determine whether existing provisions are current, valid, and in force. Any conflicts between bylaws should be corrected. New bylaws should codify all officials, permanent committees, and boards. The bylaws should identify and describe the role and responsibilities of appointed and elected officials, departments, and committees. The bylaws also should be organized by topic, not chronological, and include sections for special acts of the town and adoption of general enabling laws. Uh, pretty comprehensive. But that, but keep in mind, that's boilerplate for every town. Right. It's not. It's not like they looked at our bylaws and said, "Holy cow, we need to, we need to really review these and do it." That's that's boilerplate for every town, and it should be done as as housekeepers. But it's it's a really tough task. But if if you're suggesting a committee that you'll be chair of. I'd be happy to make a motion for that effect. Uh, no, I am not suggesting that. No. Um, what I am suggesting is that the Department of Revenue in 2013 has identified this as a problem for the town. And we haven't done anything about it. I'm telling you, it's not a problem for the town other than boilerplate language and housekeeping. Well, why don't we just do the housekeeping? That's if that's what we haven't been doing. It needs a committee to be chaired by someone from this board to do that. Mr. Chairman, I might add that uh, two or three incarnations ago, there was a uh, government study committee that looked at the town bylaws, and the first thing that they came up with was, you know what, let's go from three to five select. And that was the end of their investigation into the town bylaws. Yeah. Now, that was a great move. You know, I was secretly very supportive of going to five selectmen, but um, that was the extent of their investigation of the town bylaws. Yeah, if you read, if you read the town bylaws, there's a ton of them in there. That's so archaic to the town bylaws. You really need to be changed. And, uh, I don't know whether the town is up to that or not because we bring stuff in to either change or upgrade the bylaws in front of the town people now, and they. Adamantly throw it down and go on in and do it if they don't want any more new rules, regulations, or procedures, and all that. And uh, whoever decides to do that, I mean, I'd be more than willing to help, but, but uh, not as a one on committee. Um, that, that's going to take some effort into doing that. Some of them. Yeah, and, and one, of the, one of the terms that they use in there is codification. And you would almost need a company that specializes in doing that for those laws. I mean, you know, we've gotten copies of, you know, bylaws and other tariffs on related subjects, and you can see that their bylaws have been codified, and not just from like, haphazardly like ours have been going over the years, where it's really suggested you're not by subject matter, but by, by a date, you know, okay, this is the latest we've done, so now it goes into this, you know, you, you wouldn't believe how many bylaws in, in the, the the variety of subject matter that are under miscellaneous, whatever section that is, 
but I think it's section 20, but then it's miscellaneous, and anything's in it. You know, whether that you can't go swimming there at 5 o'clock at night without a bathing suit, you know, that kind of, you know. I mean, there's those kinds of things are in, you know, in our bylaws right now. Also, so, probably a lot of them, you can delete the language and just put in the, whatever the current uh, general law is today. Mm -hmm. And we can, and it has to apply by what the general law is today. Because what ends up happening is it's a $25 dollar fine for some violation that you committed uh, 50 years ago. And today, the, the state, um, is probably a hundred dollar violation rather than a twenty five dollar violation. So a person could be charged either way, either through the either through the criminal and civil law. So it's, there, there is a lot of work to it, but I mean, I'd be more glad than jump on a committee if there was somebody else that wanted to do it with me. So, and, and just so you folks know, don't misconstrue my pushback thinking that it doesn't need to happen, it, it's good. It does need to happen, and it should. But I, I really am animated because I, I don't think you understand how arduous and task it is. Do you think you have real? Right. So what, why don't we look at a chart? That's even more arduous. Yeah. Well, there are many towns across this Commonwealth, and if all the jobs have gone to town managers. And that information is available. Job descriptions, what the charter is. I don't know why we couldn't get your mind on somebody else's charter. Well, the charter is a, a two-year The charter committee. The charter committee is appointed, it's created, and then it's a, it's a two-year commitment to get a charter for it. And, and it is not absolutely legal. A town government can run just fine with a town manager and bylaws, and, and the charter can come secondarily at all. Well, I didn't write this, but on the town website, if you click on committees, it gives you a list of all the committees. And when you click on a particular committee, it tells you what it's about, who's on it, so forth and so on. Now on the town government study committee, it says the ultimate goal of the town government study committee is to gain the support and confidence of the public through the creation of a new charter, establishing the framework for an improved organizational structure for the town of Emerald. Like I say, I didn't write that. I don't know who wrote it. Could have been somebody's idea or what they thought was going to happen on that committee, but it was revisited from the nevertheless, committee. it's up there. Yeah, it was revisited from the previous committee, and that's what the constituent was like. Okay, it's just you take the temperature of the committee. The committee evolved. The committee, the current committee, has turned over one hundred percent. There are, I'm the only sitting original member, the only one. So everyone that started the committee fell off. New people came on, fell off. New people came on, and we tried. So we got a bylaw passed at the last town meeting, so we had some action. Uh, the committee this year, this coming town meeting, this town meeting warrant, uh, intends to put on a uh, town manager article which is going to be uh, very consuming for uh, data gathering, which we've been doing already, uh, reaching out to the public and to town departments and boards. Uh, there's only so much you can ask of uh, volunteer people to, to do for families and actually get something done and get movement done, which I think this committee has already, has already, has already seen and proved that we can get action done and completed at the town meeting floor. And we have uh, another big task ahead of us this coming this coming year. So it's a group that's there now. That's not the group that's going to sit down with the one of those green visors and roll up their sleeves and look at the town the town bylaws. That's a that's a task that has to be done. It's not going to be that group. Maybe another group. 
Well, we've heard from advisory tonight begging for members to come forward to fill their ranks. And that's, there are other committees that are in the same boat, including the Government Study Committee. So, folks out there, if anyone's watching that wants to help us, not only with this project, but other projects, and the advisory board as well, uh, please uh, contact our office. And one other thing is, um, you know, we have, we have a small committee, as they say, it's, it's turned over multiple times, and now we have a group that have a, have a focus and a task at hand that they've been trying to accomplish. And just by what you're stating here tonight, you want us to backtrack and, and refocus on something because it's written on a piece of paper. And it's dangerous. It's dangerous for the, for the ego of, uh, of the people that serve in this committee that, are, that have committed to, to an idea that's developed within the committee meetings that, um, that you, you, you look at a, a mission statement from the website and you want to change the task at hand. So we have to be careful. If there's, if there's something, you're bringing it up, Lou. If there's something you want done, if you've got an issue that needs to be scratched, start a committee. Well, I thought we had one, yeah. You, it's, the mission has changed. It's, you, you, okay. Every single meeting, Lou, after every meeting, you ask me, how's the town government study committee? You've got an issue that needs to be scratched, and if, if we're not giving you what you want, then you either have to join the committee, and try to guide it toward what you want, or start a different committee. I am not. I don't understand what, what you're looking for. You bring it up all the time, and I keep telling you that we're working on stuff, but it's just not what you want. No, well, I only I, I only bring it up because you have told us that you need members, and you've had a lot of meetings that you didn't have a quorum. That's a problem, and I know you tried to get people to join that committee. We're just, you know, we're not getting anywhere, but if you're going to have an article on your schedule for a town manager in the spring, that is an accomplishment, and you've already had one. And, and, you know, uh, getting animated, because it's a difficult task to, to bring an article like that to town meeting. You need buy-in, and everything that you said tonight, the town charter, the this, you're not looking at that. The bylaws. It's it's bringing doubt into. If I'm if I'm getting doubt here at the board, select man, how the heck am I going to stand up at town meeting and, and sell something? Well, I, I my intention wasn't to create doubt. It, it, it did. Was, it's the time, it was it's the, the way my members listen where to this, are we? They're gonna they're gonna say, what's going on? I thought we were doing a good job. We've been working very hard. Well, but, I don't know. think you've heard me say you're not doing a good job. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. Any, I, don't, I don't think there's any doubt in it. I, I think. The, I think what Lou is bringing up is is uh, adequate to bring up because it's something that really needs to be done. And it's it's up to us to take it to task to do that. And I volunteer that I would do it, along with someone else there with me. But uh, it's not a one-man project. You know, we hopefully may be able to get somebody else from. It. The time to step in and hop on the committee with us, but you know, people out there today have so many things that they do on their own. It's, they don't want to get involved in town government. It's tough. It's, it's a, it's a non, really a non-paying job, and you know, you're spending a lot of time and effort trying to make something right to get shot down at town meeting. So it's, um, it is tough, and it's, um, I can feel for a lot of people out there that would like to help, but they don't want to do. They just don't want to get involved. Well, what am I, one of the members of the Government Study Committee feels so committed to that committee that he <coughs> had to make a life choice because he just had an addition to his family. He had to choose between the advisory committee and the Town Government Study Committee. And he chose the Town Government Study Committee to sacrifice his time away from his family. That's good. So maybe when he gets through with this, or uh, Town Manager, uh, maybe you guys can look at this other. Yeah, it's all things in, and it's a blue course, Bill. Yep. Right now, we just have too much, too much going on. I just had one question to ask you when you're talking about this, uh, the last stuff here, whatever, the, uh, you were going to check into uh, 
So they call me Palm Council, I guess it was, about the lights up in the center. See if you could get them put back the way they're supposed to be. Do you have an opportunity to do that? Me? Yeah. No, I don't have contact with the with them. I, I don't remember that film, so oh. <laughs> I don't remember the conversation because I would have made the problem. Yeah, the last, yeah the last, I, I have nothing to do with it. The last meeting, well, you were talking about a lot of the roads and truck exclusions. Oh, and oh, 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 And you had some conversation with them. Mm -hmm. the colony planning council. And, uh, it would really be a great Christmas present for everybody in town that would, that those lights on that he said come in the front of the center be changed back to the way they originally were because um, there's a long, long wait to see it. Um, and they changed and put the other lights on flash, which now they don't have to have those lights as long as they are because they're way beyond the, the limit up there. I mean, if you go up to Route 53 and 14, the lights are not that long there. So, you know, I don't know why they're that way in front of the Senate, other than they originally changed them because of the other two lights that were there. And now that they're on flash, the traffic is moving quicker. So, let's make it quicker for the people on Manakisa Street that are coming in the front of the Senate and also uh, and not get backed up all the way down along the shopping mall. So, if either one of you read at the end, I'll move and talk to them. Ed, do you, do you know who changed that to flashing originally? You mean on Elliott Avenue? Yes. Why they went to flashing? No, no, I know why, because we've all been bitching about it for so right. long, but you know who it is that changed it. I thought we had the key. We, we, have, have, we do have the key. Yeah. But somebody has the chain. Actually, and it was Oops. under a recommendation by Old Colony Planning Council. Uh, yeah. They went to flashing. It was an act of God. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. What happened is it was a storm, and it hit the box, hit the control panel, okay, and it went to automatically to flashing, so that it could be repaired, and. It actually fixed itself and it went back to the straight red, yellow, and green. Right. And everybody complained about that. Right. So we went back because we had the key to the right. and put it back on flashing. Right. And everybody loves it. That's right. Now you're talking about the lights going eastbound on Mattachese Street, trying right. to make the left or right on Route 36. Right. Yep. That's that's the signal because the that was changed when they put the other lights in. That has I never been like that. that. Uh, well, I do because they travel every sure. day, and so do right. a lot of other people from the town. The people that are on Route 14 trying to get through the center of town. Um, so I think Dan, you know, will contact OCPC and see if the traffic in there will come there. Well, I talked to him about your recommendation. And see, originally we tried to get. DPW involved in it, and then uh, they were going to do it, but then they decided not to do it. And then we tried to get the police chief involved in it, and he would hire somebody to take care of the lights and all that in town, and then found out they had to be an electrician or whatever. So then it went back and forth, and then finally, originally, the planning board turned it over to the town, so it's a town responsibility. So then I contacted Halifax, which they take care of their own lights now. Um, so it's just learning which switch in the box to throw. It's not a big deal. It's all you need is somebody to show you which switch that you have to throw. You know, change. But I think what you want is you want the red the red light to go back the way it was. Well, and you want it less than a minute. Let's say right now it's a minute. Right. Which seems like an hour or something. Yeah, well, no, it's more than or, the, or, or the green light longer. Is that what it is? Is the green light No, short? just just to put it back the way that it originally was, because it originally was. Um, I don't know how many seconds it was now. I've got it written down from probably five six years ago. But it's um, it needs to go back the way that it was in the regular traffic light, because the others are on flashing. When the other ones were changing then that was longer so that the traffic could come through the center. 
early in the morning and late at night. Right. And when you go up there and sit there at the traffic light in the morning now or at night, you can sit there and look down either way in Center Street, all the way down as far as you could possibly see. And the car will be down there and pass you through the center before that light comes in. And it's, and it's really ridiculous. Merry so Christmas. What's, have somebody change. What's supposed to happen, though, is there's a sensor in the ground. When, when you pull up. And that sensor doesn't work either. But that's that's probably the big issue there. No, it isn't. It's the timing of the light. Believe me, I've looked into this for a long time now. And it's the timing of the light. That's another problem. The sensor is another problem. But the timing of the light has been changed. And it's changed for early morning and late at night traffic. So it opens it wide open so that the people can go right through the center. Yeah. Right? That needs to be changed back to the regular traffic light. The, any other traffic light that you pull up to, you pull up to when you wait a minute or something, the thing turns green and go through. Anybody that travels that road will tell them that that is in a bad situation. It's way too long. The traffic backs all the way up to the second exit going in to stop and drive. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. It might be that sensor that's broken because the sensor changes the timing. There's a loop. There's a loop right. in the street and it, and it senses. There's two ways it does it. Yeah. There's one way that the sensor hits it, and the other way is that it's, it's on a timer. They have a clock that's inside that big box, and that is set at certain times for a certain um, lights and how long the light stays green or how long the light stays red or whatever. It's, it's that mechanism that's in there that changes that during a certain time period. So maybe it's from 5 to 8 or from 5 to 9 or whatever it is during the day. That's what needs to be changed. The engineers won't do it without a traffic study. So nobody will go up there and change it without having a traffic study. And traffic studies are a lot of money. They're probably $70,000 just to change that light. So with Halifax, they said upon themselves to do their own. So I don't see why we can't. If it's under the board of selectmen, we have the right to do it. And we just need to find somebody that knows those switches to tell us where to put it. And we'll put it on there. I certainly agree with that, Mr. Chairman. I was hoping to go back to the discussion we had before about the comprehensive review of bylaws and some of the other committees, the overall problems with that and the committees. Something that came to my mind is we have a great untapped potential workforce and high school students have to do 50 or so mentor volunteer on this in town. We actually have a member of the school committee sitting in, and I was hoping she could comment on this and whether or not high school students would want to volunteer for the town. I am not a member of the school committee, but. <laughs> She's a superintendent. Um, I bet you know that too. I know that. You know, um, I don't get to vote. I just get to sit here. Um, I'm sure we do have some students that are very interested in government. We have an AP government class at the high school. Um, I don't know if there's age requirements on your committees, but if you definitely um, feelers out of our AP that kids are generally seniors anyways, but if them are 18 um, and for district development. It's a small window that they're available for before they go to college, but I'm sure they
I'll make that the final motion. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Aye. Very close. All right. Well, Mr. Chairman, I just have two other quick things on this DOI report and the town administrator's latest report on it. Um, we, we haven't had a wage and personnel board in several years, and the town administrator has uh, taken on some jobs that the wage and personnel board's job description uh, would give that job to them. So we don't have them. And uh, the way we're trying to get people to fill in other committees, we're probably not going to have a wage and personnel board for some time. I'm not aware of any significant problems we've had, but there is a uh, there is a write-up about what they do, and uh, so I think we'll just I guess that's just a comment that I would make. So and the wage and personnel board is. If the town did go to a town manager, all those tasks and duties would be with the town manager. Excellent. That would be great. Uh, the last quick thing, uh, Ed, it was just a question. Uh, number 31 is require salaried employees to file timesheets. And your update is the town administrator will draft the template timesheet for salary employees. My question is, does that include the Board of Selectmen? No. Thank you. That's it for me, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. How about the town administrators report? I have nothing tonight. Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Anything for ask the Selectmen? There is not any new business. Hearing none, is there anything that you would like to say tonight? Of course, please come up to the microphone. That falls under new business. Oh, sorry. No problem. Falls under new business. Um, so, some of you may or may not know, um, an employee of the school department passed away last night. She was an active employee. Um, so, our policy allows us to lower our flags in the buildings to half staff. And I'm here to ask if you guys would be willing to lower the flags on the town buildings to half staff also. Through her burial, which is Saturday. I would think that they do that. It just needs the board of selectmen support under the F the uh, F red the uh, flag policy. I would move that we put the uh, flags in the town hall and the town property and have staff uh, in honor of Linda Mulcairn that they be. Uh, Hold that kind of pass until Saturday afternoon. Second. Any questions or comments? I don't know. Aye. Take care of that first thing. We have some upcoming issues. Uh, annual town meeting for Warren Oakham on January 22nd, February 5th. Open the special within the annual town meeting warrant, February 5th. Uh, Jack Cocchio, Social Community Action Council, request for funding, February 9th, all warrants closed. Uh, February 23rd, signing of town meeting warrants, May 8th, annual town meeting, <coughs> May 12th, the annual town election. Is there any need for executive session tonight? Yes, sir. Very briefly. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that the board go into executive session for our rule number three to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares. Pembroke Permanent Firefighters Association, Local 2351 of the IAFF Union Grievance. And the chair does so declare. Second. Uh, by roll call? Yes. 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 Yeah. And yes. So that will uh, conclude uh, tonight's meeting. Is there any reason to come back into the executive sessions for a vote? 
approved. Okay. Um, and we'll conclude tonight's meeting, uh, December 18th. Uh, uh, next meeting will be on um, January 8th, the next scheduled meeting. Uh, so we wish you uh, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, hope uh, Santa Claus is good to you. So, I go and thank you for tuning in.